Welcome to the first video in the Animation Paths Part 2 video series, Modifying a Path. So one thing I want to bring your attention to, an inconsistency that exists between the sample materials for Pack 11, 12, and now Pack 13, are the position of the birds. So in Pack 11, they were staggered exactly in this formation. However, in Pack 12, they're along the same plane. In Pack 13, I've staggered them once again. So that's just my fault I'm using two different scenes when I really shouldn't have. So now let's take a look at our scene so far and what we have by clicking on the play button. Okay, and let's look at that one more time a little bit slower. I'll just drag the playhead across. So we see there's several movements going on here. We see the door sliding open, the birds are flying, and the punching bag is moving back and forth. However, when you play this, I don't know if you feel it, I know I feel it, there's some things that are a little bit off. Um, I feel like the punching bag is a little bit mechanical, I feel like as we truck in towards the door, we're going very quickly and then we halt very suddenly. Um, and that the birds actually, uh, because they were sort of drawn a little cheaply, we don't have the wings flapping the way birds should, they're sort of gliding, I feel like they should fly in sort of a, a curved pattern. I, I feel like they should come down like this swooping and not sort of beeline across the background. So what I'm going to discuss with you in this tutorial is a way of refining your animation and taking care of those little things. So two toolbars that you're going to need for this tutorial are the coordinates toolbar and the control point toolbar. So let's bring those two toolbars up. Okay, so as you can see, we're losing a lot of screen space here. So I'm going to get rid of a few toolbars. I'm going to get rid of the scripting toolbar here. And I'm going to move the animation, advanced animation toolbar right beside the, uh, the control points toolbar. You're also going to need a new panel. So let's open it up. And that's the coordinate and control points panel. And then let's grab the tab and pull it out and put it in between your camera view and your top view here like that and so the information that you're going to see in the coordinates and control points panel is going to be redundant with the information that you're going to see in the control points toolbar here and the coordinates toolbar which is down here but it's good to see that redundancy and know what's available to you so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to display a path in the camera view. So if you're on Windows, you're going to go to Edit Preferences, and if you're on Mac, you'll go to Animate Pro Preferences. And then in the Camera tab, under the Control Points heading, you have to select the option Show Control Points on Selected Layers, and then press OK or hit Enter to validate your selection. So now if you choose a layer in your timeline, so let's go all the way to the bottom here and choose the camera peg for example, you'll see something like this in the camera view and this in the top view. It's a trajectory or what we call a trajectory uh, punctuated by two keyframes in this case. So it's this keyframe here and this keyframe here on frame 10 and 60 respectively that you see at the start and the finish of um, your trajectory. And here in the camera view it's hard to see because it goes directly, it recedes directly into space along the Z plane, but if you look in the perspective view, you'll see it does indeed go all the way back. So one more thing you have to be sure of before you start um, adding control points and keyframes is that your layer is actually 3D and not separate. Otherwise, what we're about to do will not work. You really do need it to be 3D. So I'm going to change that and then close the panel. Okay, so now let's get back to the trajectory. You can even take a look at it from the side view. So what's great about the trajectory is that it gives you a visual representation of where your animated object is heading in your animation. So what these lines represent, this hatching that you see along this orange path, are actually the number of frames that exist between these two keyframes. And as you'll see throughout the tutorial, I'll show you how to bend this path 
and that allows you to change the spacing between these lines, which is essentially changing the velocity because it's the time the object takes to get between two frames. By selecting the option of show control points on selected layers in the preferences panel, what we did is we turned on the option that allows you to select different objects and see the trajectory for those objects. However, if you wanted to see several at the same time or have a specific trajectory remain visible at all times, uh, let's go back to the camera for example, then what you would have to do is go to the top menu and go to view, show, control. So nothing's changed because we're still on the camera layer. But now if we go up to say the bird peg and selected that, well now the camera has stayed, the camera's trajectory has stayed um, visible in the camera view and in the top and side view as well as now the bird's trajectory. However, if we click off the bird's trajectory and choose something else like the door, then the door and the camera will remain because the camera is the only one that we use the um, view menu item for. But you can do that for several, so I can also do it for the door. You can go to the top and say view, show, control. So now when I select the bird layer, the bird, the door, and the camera trajectories will all be visible until I click off the birds and then only the door and the camera trajectory will remain. So something like that, for example. So I'm actually going to turn this one off by going to view, show, and you actually have to just select it again. And now if I click off the door trajectory is gone. So there are several ways of shaping a trajectory. Um, you can either shape it using keyframes or control points. So let me explain the difference to you. So keyframes you've already seen and used in the timeline, and they do in fact show up on the timeline when you add them to a trajectory in the camera view. And keyframes represent um, a change in scale, position, rotation, etc. And they exist on a specific frame. They have a position. Um, however, control points also have a position, but they do not appear in the timeline, and they do not have a specific frame. Um, the way that I'm going to show you how to bend a path, very similar to the way that you shape the outside of a contour, however there are no bezier handles, but it's a very similar principle of just moving points and then changing the curve. So let's go back to the top panel, and then let's go to view, hide all controls, just to make everything disappear. So we still see the bird trajectory because of the option that we selected in the preferences panel. Um, but what we really want to be on is the camera peg right here. So to add a control point, um, you need to have the transform tool selected and you can click anywhere on this trajectory. So let's move us, let's move down to the 30th frame. So you see the green dot with the line, that highlighted area indicates what frame that you're on. And then you simply need to click on the keyboard shortcut P. And then if you click on that point, and drag it in any direction, you'll see that the actual form of the trajectory has been modified as well as what you actually see in the camera view. So you can add another point by scrolling further along and then using the menu item insert control point and you see the keyboard shortcut here as well. And once again, to change the form of the curve. So you also may have noticed that you don't actually see either of these two points in the timeline view. However, there is a way of converting these points into keyframes. And you can do that right here in the coordinates and control points panel. All you have to do is select this option here, locked in time. And now as you can see, point um, this control point here, which was selected in pink, now appears as uh, a keyframe that's on frame 21. Um, and then the way that you can easily untoggle that and make it a control point again is by selecting it again in the camera view and this time unlocking it. So now it's disappeared from frame 21 
and it's once again a control point in the top view as well as in the camera view. So another way that you can toggle uh, between a keyframe and a control point is in the function editor itself. So if we double click on the camera peg to bring up its layer properties, and then we click on this function button right here, we bring up the function editor for our 3D path. So if you click on the control point here, so this is not a keyframe, it's still a control point. You see it's highlighted now here in pink. You can click on this button here, which has now turned it into a keyframe. So now it appears in the timeline and it has a fixed frame. It exists on a certain frame. And you can click on it again and then once again unlock it. So that's another way of going about toggling between control points and keyframes. So the next thing um, I'd like to show you is how to adjust the curve. So if you select a control point here, you can change its tension, continuity, and bias. And these things also exist up here in the control points toolbar. So T is obviously tension, C is obviously continuity, and B is obviously bias. I believe all these values toggle between 1 and negative 1, but have incremental values, uh, decimal values in between. So what the tension does, so let's, let's play with it here, and I'll show you. So if I, if I raise the tension, all of a sudden this becomes a sharp point. So what it does is it controls the um, transition of a path. So this is now a tight transition. Um, and let's bring that maybe back to where it was. And then as you play with this, you can see it becomes more and more curved um, until up to negative one, I believe, and that's super curved. And you can always just enter in a value also of zero and make it sort of in between. Um, the continuity is the way that each of these segments um, are affected, the transition of the segments. So if we change the continuity, you can see there's sort of a peak forming. So this comes into the point, peaks, and then comes out. So it changes that the individual segments that are attached by a control point. Once again, I'm going to bring that back down to zero. And the last one, the bias, actually changes where there's more um, curve. So if it's more towards one segment or more towards another segment or the other segment on the other side. So like that, you can see it getting tight on one side and more curved on the other, and vice versa, it's getting more curved on one side and more tight on the other. So if you find you're using the same tension continuity and bias constantly, you can actually set their default values in the Preferences panel, in the Camera tab, underneath that Control Points heading. So you can actually set them here, and if you change the values here, then they will be set as the default values here in the coordinates and control points every time you add a point to your trajectory. So just for fun, let's expand the camera view and move the playhead back to the first frame and play it just to see. So that's sort of the feeling you get. You're going to the right and then to the left and then back to center. Okay, so now let's take a look at the birds. I'm going to turn off the punching bag, the dojo, both the door and its peg, and the balcony. So really what we're seeing is the birds, and I'll actually make this big again. Um, and already, unfortunately, I've made a mistake with the birds, and that's I didn't set the pivot point for the group originally. And then I already animated the birds, so now it's sort of kind of too late to change that pivot point. It's really not that big a deal, but just to be um, more clean when you're animating, this really should be probably near the center of this group. But you know, it still functions the same way. And to eliminate that wonky movement, we're also going to turn off the camera and its peg. So now when we slide it across, we just see the straight movement minus the camera truck um, that trucks in along the Z plane. So what we want to do here, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is I'd like to curve this path because as it stands, I think it looks a little odd that these birds are flying straight down. So to be able to change the curve of your path, 
First of all, you need um, a control point, so let's add one. Maybe say midway around this point. Let's pull it so that we start the base of a curve. So although now it's an angle, which we don't want, we'd like it to be curved instead of two straight segments. So then we'd go to the top menu and go to animation, linear motion. And so what that actually is, is the toggle between linear motion and curved motion. And so now we have a nice smooth curve that our birds are following. The other thing that I wanted to show you is the cumulative Z value. So it's displayed here in the coordinate and control points panel and here in the coordinates panel. So what that means is that for every object that you have in your animation that you nudged along the z-axis, so the birds, like I mentioned, are staggered along the z-axis, on top of that, this entire group, so the group's peg, has been staggered along the z-axis as well. So not only does your individual bird have a z-value, but it has a compounded z-value because it's also taking into consideration um, the peg z-nudge as well. So let's open up the data view so you can actually see this. I don't think I can extend, no, unfortunately, the timeline view anymore. And let's look at one of the birds. So let's look at the first bird here. So it's the one that's the farthest back. And if we click on the plus sign and scroll down to its Z position, we see it's negative 3.875. But then if we scroll to the top here and we look at the peg and we uncollapse that, okay, so everything's at zero, zero. But then let's, let's bring our Z value farther back. So we just move this entire group back a bit. So now if we go back down to the same bird and we look at its Z position, it's the same. It's negative 3.875. And we have to click on our actual bird first. we'll see that its cumulative Z value is not negative 3.875, but what it actually is, is negative 3.875 plus this value here. So the B stands for back, so it's negative 0 0.470. So if you added those two values together, you would see you would actually get this number. So that way, if, you're, if you do things more precisely um, with exact values and increments, you can take into account um, the entire group or the entire peg Z value and the individual Z value of the bird by looking both here and here um, in the coordinate and control points panel or in the coordinates toolbar. The next thing I want to show you is how to offset a trajectory. So let's re-collapse this. And let's, actually I'm going to undo that movement too so that this is brought back, the entire bird group is brought back to where it was before. Um, and let's select the bird peg again. So this is our trajectory, and right now it's not too bad. If we go along here, the bird group is actually following this, but say we wanted it to follow here, a little bit above. We didn't really want uh, this trajectory to be in the way of our drawings. Well, what we could do is we could use this offset spline tool in the advanced animation toolbar. You just have to click on it and then you can grab this trajectory in the camera view and pull it. And you can place it anywhere. So say I wanted to put it here. Now when I pull my red playhead across you'll see that the birds are still following the trajectory and you can still see you know the little green hot part showing us where they are in the timeline and they're scrolling across but it's not in the way of my drawings so I can see my drawings. Some people like the trajectory would be in the exact path of the drawings as it's following the drawings, but it's just good to know that you can put this anywhere and it doesn't affect your animation in any way. So that's it for the tutorial modifying a path. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Functions.